Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. As always, a reminder that this podcast does not constitute real estate advice, legal advice, broker advice, or advice of any other nature. This is an informative podcast. And if you need advice, please reach out to the correct professional who can help you. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Launch, Grow, Harvest podcast, Business Growth Coaching with Connie Buna and Roland Kim. Hi, everyone. I'm Connie Buna. And I'm Roland Kim. Welcome. Welcome to the Launch, Grow, Harvest podcast. We're super excited to talk with you today. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, the concept of we is better than me and how we gather great people around us. I'm gathered here today with some pretty stellar gentlemen in the room, and I'm feeling really happy and grateful to have them in my life. Partner, how are you this fine day? I'm great. I love this topic. It makes me really think about the last 15 years of us working together and the path and the journey we were on, um, how we've evolved over those years, and also curiously um, how many other people we have uh, interacted with that have, you know, um, evolved their own relationships. And we've seen we've seen success and we've seen, um, you know, non-success around us sometimes of, of where people aren't working mm-hmm. well together. Totally. You know, one of the things I reflect on when I'm thinking about um, the idea of we is better than me, you know, specifically for, for business people, um, you know, Roland, Kim and I are uh, brokerage owners and, uh, and real estate agents in greater Vancouver. And, and so I'll speak about my personal experience, you know, sometimes in the experience of uh, real estate and, um, and in the experience of sales, we can sometimes take the perspective that other people who are running similar businesses to ours are our competitors. Um, and that's just, you know, something that's a very interesting frame or or lens with which you could look at um, your, your, your situation. You might also look at that same situation and think those are my, my collaborators, my colleagues, my co-op partners. We always, uh, typically not always, but in most cases need two awesome realtors to have a successful transaction. Um, and so I have to say, I really learned quite a bit um, of that particular mindset from you, Roland, in your very natural ability to uh, pour into people from uh, a place of real sincere generosity. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the best ingredients for a great partnership so you can build, uh, you know, a we world versus a me world is... Um, is uh, you know not not measuring and and needing kind of a return on something right away, and it's a mindset of curiosity and and caring and sharing. It sounds silly, but it really builds a great foundation. Um, I think when we met, it was nice that um, we had no kids. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know if we were with our partners at that point, but um, so there wasn't a lot of financial pressure mm-hmm. or or. Um, you know, family pressures. And so it really provided a great foundation for us to, to you know, to feel each other out and, and, and get alignment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's amazing. It's, it's hard, you know, obviously life goes on and people still can, can evolve and, and improve even when they have those pressures. Mm-hmm. But on a negative, um, you know, what not to do, I certainly have seen a lot of things that could have worked out in great partnerships often um, stem from from pressures and a lack of sharing, a lack of mindset of openness. Mm-hmm. So when we're thinking about um, gathering great people around you, one of the things that I'm that I'm reflecting on is the concept of coming at that um, that opportunity or those conversations without the expectation of something in return, but rather from a place of generosity. And one of the ways that I think uh, when I reflect that we built our um, our friendship and our business partnership um, was truly from uh, from a, a simple phone call uh, that often generated from you. Um, and in that time of my career 15 years ago, I just really didn't, I didn't understand this concept. 
adapt. Um, it wasn't something that I had really reflected on in a lot in the past. And so I can remember, um, I've talked about this in the past, feeling really, you know, somewhat confused about what the value of you keeping in touch with me was all about. Um, and and grateful that you actually were were taking the time to ask me about how things were going for me and my my life and my business and and that you know that for me opens up a whole conversation around um, gathering great people around you often comes from the opportunity to say to folks hey what's going on for you and how can I show up how can I help how can I support you how can I be an ear. To, to listen, which is uh, which is an amazing opportunity to nurture relationships. Definitely, um, it's it is interesting that a lot of um, you know folks that you interact with, um, they on on the surface you might look very similar, and I find when a little bit of pressure is applied, you really get to see the true um, natural characteristics of a person. And mm -hmm. so you and I kind of have a, a motto with all our different teams and the different businesses that we own that we won't hire someone unless we can go camping with them. And yet we've <laughs> never gone camping with any of our... We've never uh, gone camping together. No, we haven't. <laughs> but there's a, there, that, there's a, you know, that there's, that that's a sort of, um, it's an analogy for the experience. Can you tease that out a little bit more? Can you talk about what does it mean for our team? That's a powerful analogy that we talk about all the time, which is, um, would I want to be out in the wilderness with you? Could I rely on you? Can I trust you? Um, when, when the pressure is on, are you somebody that, uh, bails or do you hold your, hold your, hold your position firm? Definitely. I mean, there's so many uh, things that you can derive from that analogy. And, you know, it's like, first of all, do you even show up on on gathering time to, you know, get on the ferry together to the camping site? There's going to be people that might bail even before you get there because yeah. they, they change their mind. And then, you know, um, once you're in a group, how is everyone interacting? Do people change mm -hmm. when they're in a different setting? Um, when work comes up, you know, is everyone pitching in regardless whether they have skills or not, but they're trying to, you know, energy, put energy forth and, and, and pull their weight. Um, when the torrential, you know, storm comes and there's, there's only one tarp, but not everyone can fit underneath it. How, how does everyone respond to that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when everyone wakes up dripping wet and cold in the morning, yes. who's the person that tries to start the fire? Who's the person that, yeah. you know, doesn't leave their tent and who left in the middle of the night and who's <laughs> angry, you know, or, and so it's all those different dynamics I find um, that do come up in, in a camping environment for me. That's just very familiar, something I grew up with yes. where, um, you know, I would say I've, I've had girlfriend, ex-girlfriends in the past where they've, uh, or friendships where, you know, you think you're going to be a great, uh, camping partner and, and it's completely a bust. And that was an environment that was uncomfortable for them. And, you know, uh, different characteristics came out that weren't shown anywhere else. Absolutely. I know that, you know, for, it's camping's not for everyone and honesty is the best policy as it regard as it, uh, it relates to that particular concept, but this, so we're talking about at this time, we're talking about a mindset of, um, of camaraderie. We're talking about a mindset of, um, feeling inspired and, and influenced by the, the people who are around you. Um, you know, th I've, we've all heard the analogies. You're the sum total of, you know, sort of the five people you spend the most amount of time with and, you know, the, I, the concept of um, surrounding yourself with people that inspire and encourage you. And, you know, those are things that certainly really resonate with me. Um, and, I, and I think about and reflect on some of the uh, some of the most enriching and rewarding relationships I've had in my life and continue to have in my life and the ways in which we are so different and yet and in very different careers and on very different paths in our lives and yet we can still find common ground um, and break bread together and share ideas together. Um, it's just, it's really, really amazing to, to, um, to think about. And also to think about that there's, you know, for myself personally, my own 
philosophy is that, you know, there's, there's always a room for more people at the table, especially if we're in alignment in a, in a sort of fundamental way and, and bringing n- new people into your world can sometimes, I know for lots of people that can be a pretty intimidating, they don't want to rock the boat. Things are good the way they are, but, um, you know, there may be a, a huge opportunity missed if, if you're closed to those, those possible new relationships. Yeah. I mean, would you agree with me that um, as you get more experienced and perhaps as you, you know, your time becomes more valuable, your habits change on how you're going to find or measure or qualify someone to, to add them to your team? What I mean by that is, you know, if I think back to when we first started, we kind of um, created a partnership naively through positivity and, and like great mm-hmm. actions, but it was at no point did we want to, um, were we thinking that we we're creating a partnership or that that was our goal? Mm-hmm. And now, you know, 15 later, uh, 15 years later and, and um, you know, co-owning several different businesses uh, due to our time, due to success, wanting to, you know, wanting to be successful out of the start, I would say our approach to meeting with, interviewing and interacting with potential team members or, or affiliated uh, partners or, or employees is quite structured and quite different in order that we have the highest success rate. Because we've certainly over the years... Um, taking the passive approach of, you know, yeah. having some casual conversations in the interview, thinking that, you know, you're a great person. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll get along and it'll be a win-win. And, and so that's an interesting thing where we've gotten a lot more critical, not maybe critical is the wrong word, a lot more structured and mechanical. In we order, have a system. We have a system. We have a recipe. Mm-hmm. And I think we are also, we're far more transparent. Yes. So we're talking at this point now about gathering people around us in a business capacity. You know, we don't interview <laughs> friends. Okay. So this is not, <laughs> that's not the point, but we we're talking about how we're gathering awesome people around us in a business capacity to, to, to um, succeed together. And I would say that through a lot of failure and some amazing success stories that you know uh, that have bubbled up. Our, our our core operations director for our for a number of our businesses was somebody that um, you know was one of those hires. Where we're like, okay, well, like she kind of needs work <laughs> and she's really sweet, and let's just see how it all pans out. And it turned out that it was amazing, amazing, amazing. amazing. Tamara, we love you. And she's bl- she's changed our lives. Yes. I know we've changed hers, and it's just one of those relationships that, um, you know, regardless of where our paths lead, I know we'll always be in our in our in each other's lives in some capacity. But moving forward from 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 you know where we are today, we we are so much more structured, and we're way more honest about what we're what our expectations are. And what we what we need in exchange for this to be a positive dynamic. So that looks like, for example, being super clear with prospective team agents that are considering the possibility of joining our team. We have a fairly unique team structure um, where we are mentors and coaches and set standards and and help folks to build amazing businesses in their own right. Um, and if we encounter somebody that doesn't have the mindset to be a business builder and the and the self drive to take the action steps needed to hit their goals they're not they're out of alignment they're not going to be a great fit and and it'll feel crunchy and you know i think sometimes that's just a, de- a, a, a developmental opportunity as we get older we start to i'm personally learning to just be listening to those, um, my intuition and listening to, um, like looking realistically at the, at the situation in front of me without trying to build a story around it, you know? And so one of the things we talk about, for example, in some of the, we, we meet with candidates many, many times before, um, we onboard somebody, but one of the things that we talk about, that's a really critical conversation are the the standards and expectations in the first, you know, 90 days that we're in business relationships together. We break that down in three steps. We have a 30-day review, a 60-day, and a 90-day. And there are there's, you know, a detailed checklist under each category. Um, and it's clear in the first conversation that um, it, it's not about 
uh, you know, often through the con- through the interview process, we can gather whether there's going to be a personality click. Mm-hmm. So we're past that piece. More we're going to be talking about, are we going to be able to meet the standards? Um, and we've had amazing results by by leaning heavily into this system and allowing the system to help us um, foster really, really wonderful relationships with folks. And, you know, sometimes because of the way that we are clear on the standards, sometimes at, at the at the review periods, we have a mutual agreement that, you know what, it's, it's not meeting their expectations, it's not filling their cup, and it's not working for us either in that, um, you know, that uh, that end feels so much better now, if you can even say that about, and I just feel like that's just that's just natural. Relationships come to an end sometimes, but it feels a lot more natural, and it feels less um, personal when we can just both of us, like everyone, is coming to that conversation with total transparency. Yeah, it's the so the thirty sixty ninety is so integral in creating a team around you and going beyond just me to we, and the reason for that is um, I would say if you're meeting with someone and and they're choosing to get into alignment with you or into business with you and you are doing the same, um, you know you've you've explained the role that each person has, you've broken down the the role into tasks and broken down those tasks into um, you know where they should see success uh, within the thirty sixty ninety days. Mm-hmm. At that point, both people like the are, are in agreement and in agreement that if that wasn't being met, that it's not it's not a win win. It's not working for either party. And we've had people, you know, get into a relationship with us and, and at 90 days kind of say, thank you so much for the opportunity, but this isn't a fit for me or mm-hmm. even at the 60 days. Mm-hmm. And the reason I think that is so much more um palatable is because one you went in eyes wide open and and um, often the other person is realizing they either don't want that role or it's not a fit for them at that time and many of those folks that we've you know not made past 90 days were staying in alignment or we we still know we you know we connect yes and the the opposite of that would be an earlier version of Connie and Roland where we didn't have a detailed 30 60 90. Um, we'd be at like 180 days and we'd still be convincing ourselves, you know, they just need more experience in real estate. They just need more experience at, you know, coaching and, mm-hmm. um, you know, moments would happen where Connie and I would say, OK, this isn't a fit. We got We got to have to end this. And then, um, you know, an interaction would happen with with that team member that made us feel like, OK, let's continue. But eventually it ends. And the funny part is, even if you're you know, in a relationship and perhaps, you know, if you consider Connie and I the leader and, and a team member, the the team member, or, or in, in an employee case, the employee, two years after an employee, um, you know, stops working, even though us as leaders feel like we've really taken care of them and poured into them and, and um, you know, paid a, a living wage and hopefully a great salary, the, 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 team member, the employee, when it doesn't work out, doesn't see the past two years of success. Mm -hmm. It it still didn't work out. And so it's really not a win-win. It's not even helping them. And so it's the 30, 60, 90, I think is such a great way of of being Mm -hmm. a gatekeeper Mm -hmm. and getting value for your time. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to touch on is like, as we're doing this recording right now, we have you know, great team members out there doing administrative work, team members doing, you know, showings and real tours. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's pretty darn cool when you look at what's happening right now with with our real estate team. But equally, that took a lot of time, Mm -hmm. took a lot of uh, effort and and resources. And we've chosen to go down that path and and nail it at the highest level. We also know people that... um, are making uh, you know a, a me world work if they're if they're not wanting to invest in the we world. Mm-hmm. So you gotta be honest with what you need and what, what you, you want. Need. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing those nuggets. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm.